HogGIS toolboxes allow us to create Python script tools and models for Model Builder. A script tool is different to a Python toolbox, which we covered in a separate video, and we'll look at those differences at the end of this video. First, let's see how to create a script tool. The example I will show is using an existing Python script and making that script into a user-friendly ArcGIS Pro tool. I've got this Python notebook uh, that I created also in a previous video. This script turns lines into points and then interpolates those points into a surface. Now you can use any script, but I happen to have this one uh, I want to use. So I can export this notebook as a Python script. Having exported it, we open the script in our Python editor, Visual Studio Code in this case. Now, to be able to use this script in a tool, we need to modify the inputs and outputs. A script tool uses the arcpy get parameter as text to get input and output put for the tool. So the existing script has the data sets that are used hard-coded, and the notebook was referencing layers in the project. We are converting this to a tool where the user is going to define what data is going to be processed. So we need to change the hard-coded input and outputs to get parameter as text. We will then get a configurable tool. So let's get rid of the workspace. The script had assumed all data was in the same place, but we'll remove it so the data can be anywhere. Then replace the other input and output with get parameter as text. Also, this ArcPy tool had the name of the field it was going to process hard-coded. So we're going to change that to a user configurable field with get parameter as text. And by removing the quotes, we make it into a variable. And as we don't have a workspace defined, we need to ask the user where to save the raster as the output. Notice we set numbers in the brackets, starting with zero and increasing in the order they are to appear in the tool. So we get zero, one, two, three, four for a total of five items that the user will configure. Also, we had this print statement that counts the number of features that will be processed. It's just info for the user. Now that would appear in the notebook. But if we want it to appear in a tool, we need to replace that print statement with arcpy.addMessage. This is the function that prints out text in the tool dialog. So that's all set up. We can save that script to a suitable location. Can be anywhere. Now we create the toolbox by going to the catalog window and selecting toolboxes and new. Then right click and new, and we want a script tool. Then the properties dialog will appear. We can give the script a name, which can't have any spaces, and the label that can have spaces, which can be more descriptive, and will appear in the catalog window and will be what the user sees for the tool. Now go to the execution tab and select the folder icon. This is where we point the tool to our Python script. It's now referenced at the top here. If we want to share this tool, we would need to embed the script through this icon. Otherwise, this script uh, stays separate from the toolbox and we need to share the script as well. Now go to the parameters tab. And this is where we define what inputs and outputs the tool is going to ask the user. So all those get parameter as text arcpy functions we defined in the code, this is where we set up a parameter to pass values to those functions. The label is going to appear next to the input or output box. So it's what the user sees. The first input is the line feature to be processed, contour, and we can select a feature layer as the data type. Then what field within that line feature we're going to use. Then the barrier feature. The points feature class that is created 
from the lines so we can use them with a points interpolation process. And as this is something that is created, it is an output. And finally, the parameter that will be the raster output. That is the surface that is created as a resu result of interpolating or gridding those points. The validation tab displays the validation code and you can edit that code to customize the tool further if you want. We are not going to do that. So we can okay the tool properties. Now, when we open the tool, we have the three inputs and two outputs that we defined as the parameters, which in turn can be obtained by the script uh, with those get parameter as text functions. So we have the input and output boxes. And if we want the parameter tooltip to show some explanation for the user, which are empty at the moment, we go to the metadata and edit. Then in the metadata dialog, go down to the syntax and we can put in some instructions, uh, even with a bit of formatting. Save that, and when we hover over the icon again, we can see those tooltips to help the user to know what parameters they need to select. So let's set up the tool ready to run. As the inputs are feature layers, they will show data in the content pane, and we can either select from the drop down menu or drag the layer into the input box. Uh, need to specify what field is to be processed. Then the output, which was a raster data set, so need to save that to a geodatabase. Now we can run the tool, and the input contents layer is converted to points, and these points are interpolated, resulting in a surface, which is shown as a raster as the final output. And if we look at the post run tool messages, uh, we can also see those uh, that ArcPy message printout that we defined in the Python code. So script tools, which are part of ATBX toolboxes were introduced in ArcGIS 9. Originally, they were just TBX files, um, subsequently renamed to ATBX in Pro. Uh, model Builder models are also created in toolboxes, and you use script tools as part of models as well. Just drag them in. Python toolboxes were introduced later in ArcGIS 10.1, and with these, you can do everything in Python. That is no properties dialog to set up as we have just done with our script tool. And for experienced Python coders, operating entirely in a Python environment has some advantages. For those less experienced, the ATBX toolbox might be better. A lot of the properties can be defined in the dialog rather than coding that up, and it can be used with Model Builder. Subscribe for more GIS and Python content coming soon.